This message is brought to you by danmolerarchive.com, the number one place to search over 2,500 Dan Moeller messages in growing. Now, please enjoy this message. It's right here. Watch. Because lawlessness will abound. He's letting you know it will abound. Don't you let lawlessness decide your heart. Let his goodness have already captured it. See, when this happens, if you're walking in love, you're untouched. If you're a Christian for your sake, when this happens, you'll be wondering why God's letting it happen and what did I do wrong and what door did I open and why do you let him treat me that way if you love me? You show me one person that ever had that mentality that was encouraged in producing life. It won't happen. You know the analytical thing I touched a little bit this morning? I have never in my life met a person professing to be analytical that admitted they were blessed and free and filled with God's Spirit. They were always overthinking and struggling and had questions. I've never seen a person confessing, almost priding themselves in being an analytical person that was walking in a confession of blessed. That should be a warning. Yeah? Because lawlessness will abound, watch, the love of, here we go, will what? Now that's fascinating because that's telling you that people were walking in love. They had a revelation of love. But they got their eyes on lawlessness and it began to overshadow and outweigh the love that they had become. Are you with me? It doesn't say they never knew love in the first place so they were sitting ducks. It said the love they knew went cold because they didn't take earnest heed of the things they heard. And they got their eyes on what was wrong and they missed what was made right. And they failed to see that they were created to be a response in the situation, not a recipient of the situation. So they took on the situation instead of shine into it. Are you with me? Watch. Lawless is going to unbound, and the love of many will grow cold. So what is the purpose of the false prophet thing and all the lawlessness abounding and Satan moving in people to get all this stuff to happen? Is he trying to give you a rough day and break your heart? Is he trying to blow up your circumstances? He's after love. Because the thing that he can't defeat about God is God is love. And you and I, before we knew God, didn't deserve anything from God, and he gave us his son and his kingdom. You can't beat a God like that. There's nothing you can do to stop him except get the people to not believe it's true and receive it. Are you with me? But he who endures to the end. Now, I know people read this and freak out, and they think, well, why aren't we even making it to heaven? It's always about, are we going to heaven? No, you want to make it till the end, write a legacy, and bear fruit that remains. You're going to endure to the end and be saved. The word saved there means healed, delivered, protected, preserved, made whole, and kept safe and sound. Yeah? So what do you say we maintain love? I got a vision in my bedroom in about 1999, 2000. It was probably before 2000. I was in my bedroom interceding and praying. I was, it was, I was probably a pastor. It was probably 98, 99. It doesn't really matter. It was way back there. Yeah. I was in my bedroom and I was praying and I was interceding and just praying being with Jesus and I had a vision it wasn't with my eyes open I had my eyes closed and I was singing and I was praying and this vision unfolded in front of me and I stopped singing and I had music I had a piano playing just on a CD it was just flowing and playing and and I was just this had that flowing and I just stand there just kind of probably swinging like this and the vision just unfolded I never opened my eyes you know what I mean 
I saw these corridors that were dark and dingy. They were little lamps, kind of look like a movie scene when you're inside a whole bunch of caves that all meet in a big living space and or all come together. And there was little torches at the mouths of the holes. And there was all these black silhouettes and figures and there was hysteria. It started to unfold that I could hear them and there was cursings and they were freaking out. This group was freaking out. And there was a tall figure in the center of the chaos and all the figures and the silhouettes that I was seeing. And he, he was standing, he was hooded, and he was just standing like this. Silent and motionless, I saw a side view. He was like this. You're in a vision, God's given you understanding. I knew it was hell, I knew it were demons, I knew it was Satan. A newspaper came through the vision. Jesus Christ raised from the dead and a big bold exclamation point passed right through my vision, a newspaper headline, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, and it just went out of the picture. And I could hear hell freaking out, screaming at Satan, you fool, we should have never followed you. We're finished now. God has brought salvation to men. Men can be filled with God's spirit. Men can walk in the authority of his name. We are destroyed, we are finished. And they were freaking out because when they saw what they did and their eyes were open and all the scriptures came to light, they were freaking out. And Satan's standing there, and it reminded him of Ziglag and David, and when the town got burned, and they took all the women and children, and they wanted to stone David, and everybody was freaking out on David, and David had to encourage himself in the Lord, and that's the scene it reminded me of, only it was demons and the devil, and he has authority, and he's, he's the devil, so he was head and shoulders above everybody, and it represented authority, and I knew who he was, and he's hooded the whole time. And all of a sudden he lifted his face and I saw this figure of a face and it got a sinister look on it. And he yelled real loud, even though they were all freaking out and they looked like they were turning on him. He said, silence, and they all, silence. And he said, it is true we played into the hand of God. It is true that we opened the door for salvation to men. It's true that we shed innocent blood and that blood is now on the mercy seat in God's throne room. It is true that we played into the wisdom of God. He said, but we do not have to be moved and we do not have to fret. He said, we know we can't defeat God, but we know, we know we can defeat them. We have defeated them from the beginning. This is what I heard. Remember Eve? Ha, ha, ha. Remember Adam? Huh. Every man is for himself. Every man lives for himself. God has paid a price for salvation to men, but we can stop it. I want you guys to come in here. They all came in. They're in a big huddle. He says, don't worry about them building churches. Don't worry about them preaching. Don't worry about them praying. Don't worry about their gatherings. Let them gather. Just keep their hearts far from who he is. Keep them hurt. Keep them frustrated. Get them to compete. Make them argue over their beliefs. Do whatever you can to keep what he paid for becoming real to them. Keep men stuck within men and keep them the same. But let them do what they do toward God. But make sure they're hurt inside, frustrated inside and unforgiveness inside. Come on, guys. We know men. We know them from the beginning. Every man is for himself. We can do this, guys. And by the year, whatever I heard, by the year, whatever what it was, 2098, 99, it'll be no big deal. It'll be an Easter story, but there'll be no apparent change on the earth, even though God crucified his own son. And I'm standing there bawling in this vision thinking how much has this come to pass when you look at all the arguments in the church, all the division, all the stuff that has happened since that time. 
And he huddled them in and he said, we can do this. And it was like a rally before a basketball team or football team. They get somebody in the middle and get everybody fired up. Rah! And then they all run out in the field. That's what he was doing. And he said, we can do it, guys, to the four corners of the earth. Keep them blind. Keep them deceived. Make it all about them. Let their ministries be about what they're doing. Let's let them do it in the name of the Lord. But it's all about them. Keep it. And he was shouting all this stuff. He said, we can do it. And they're like, yeah. And they broke and everything went Phew! out the holes, out the caves. And Satan was standing there all by himself, still in that position, shaking his head. And I opened my eyes. And I cried for a very long time. And I asked God for mercy, and I asked God for wisdom. Here's why I told you that vision, I believe. Because I don't know, it just got big in my heart. He succeeded in that vision in many ways. When you hear somebody tell you a story like that, you have to make sure that he's not succeeding that vision in your life. When he says every man loves himself, you have to make sure he's wrong where you're concerned. When he says people don't love God, they need God, you have to make sure, no matter how much he's right, you have to make sure he's wrong where you're concerned. Are you with me? God has done the greatest thing that could be done. And there is innocent blood on the mercy seat of heaven crying out mercy upon men. His blood is speaking better things. So let's go after the better things. Amen? Amen. If you enjoyed this message, please visit danmolerarchive.com to find over 2,500 more messages from Dan, all organized by category, playlist, and search. Enjoy.